Welcome in to this week's episode of Your Drone Questions Answered, brought by Drone Launch Academy. I'm your host, Chris Breelove, as always. So I'm actually inviting my first repeat guest, uh, Eric Richard from Drone Soccer, was back on episode 95 answering, well, what is drone soccer? But Eric is back today, kind of help us dig into the current state of play of drone manufacturing in the United States. So Eric, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Thank you so much for having me once again. I'm excited to talk with you. Thank you for tuning in. So Eric, before we get into that, would you just remind folks who haven't heard that other episode, just your background in brief? Absolutely. So a little bit about what I do. I started, got into drones 12 years ago. I started out as a C-130 crew chief. I was also an aircraft commander. I was a C-130J pilot for 10 years. And then on the drone side, I started my own drone education business in 2019. I did that for five, five and a half years, developing my own equipment, actually working with India to try and develop a drone and bring it to the U.S. to support the education market. I got invited to the U.S. Drone Soccer and Drone Sports to come and be part of their leadership and continue the development of products and supporting the education community. So that's my history. I guess just to kick us off, you know, well, what is the state of play? We all know what current events are. What do you think is going to happen? Since the beginning of the year, it's just been such an exciting time. Everything's changing. We got the, the new political climate is changing. And all the businesses, along with us, are just trying to figure out what is happening. What is the effect? How do we respond to it? And how do we keep supplying equipment? So there's a massive delay in getting the equipment in stock, being able to ship stuff out. So right now, there's, there's a, a long back order of products. We also started to see as tariffs started, everyone wanted to get ahead of it. So we saw bulk orders from major manufacturers, from retailers, and that just clogged up the system, the shipping system. So now your package that took one week to get to you, maybe two weeks, was taking three to four weeks to arrive, further compounding the issue of getting our equipment to customers. And from then on, it's just been going downhill. As things have changed, that just takes time for it to actually get to the ports. So what we've seen is in charges, we have only played, paid one tariff thus far. And that was from a European country. We imported something, we got a tariff notification and fees and everything. And, and that was actually pretty high. That was on par with how much we would have paid for the, the value of the product was how much we had to pay in fees. And unfortunately it was a warranty item. So it's gonna be a net loss of that amount for the company itself. Every time we make an order, it's a gamble. So if we make a $30,000 order, it could be a $30,000 order, or it could be a $90,000 order. You won't know till it arrives in port. And in which case then we can't then charge the customer three times as much because in our, our line of work, it's all done by purchase orders. So they've already allocated the funds. So all we can do is say, send it back to source. We can't afford that. It's a lose-lose situation. And that explains why you're seeing so many canceled orders. Chinese companies have, or even other countries have simply said, we're not going to ship to the U.S. at all because of so many canceled orders because their ports are getting blocked up with, with orders that are shipping and uh, they're sitting in port. From the hardware that you guys are equipping different educational institutions with, is it a fair statement to say it's more like the FPV hobbyist type drone hardware, correct? Correct. Um, that is what we're focused on right now to fulfill our current orders for our customers. We want to develop the electronic stack. So that would include the flight controller, ESCs, receiver, everything to get you started and outfit the kit. The rest of the equipment is relatively cheap and easy to get from other countries to import. And we do have plenty of opportunities to do that in the U.S. For example, injection molding, not going to be cost effective to do that in the U.S. It's significantly more. However, it is still possible and it's relatively easy to make the molds and, and do everything to that. We have been very fortunate on the drone sports side, the manufacturing side, that we have anticipated something like this happening about six months ago. We recognized the dependency. We wanted to get control over our quality control, our programming, set our customers up for success, just one-time plug-in. Because a lot of what we see on our end is that it should work right out of the box. But maybe the manufacturers made a design change. Maybe it was made in a different place. And our quality control has, has gone south. So we made start making moves about six months ago to bring that in house, at least the electronic side. And that is also a step in the direction of making us NDAA compliant. So we're really excited about that. We're happy to have the manufacturing up and running. Yeah. Let's talk about a drone, all the components of a simple quadcopter. What sensitive electronics, I suppose, are we heavily Chinese dependent on? And which of those are y'all able in the near term to 
have an alternative in the United States versus which ones are we kind of out of luck? And I think batteries might be an infamous one there, right? Yes, yes. Um, there's three big ones that we found out that will affect the hobbyist community. Obviously, the drones themselves, if they come complete, pre-built, that is going to have significant cost increases. If you're building yourself out there, it's going to be batteries, motors, and radios. So the actual handheld component where you're flying your drone from, there are no U.S. manufacturers. Motors in particular, there are U.S. manufacturers. However, the consideration is going to be raw materials are still going to cost a significant amount. We sell motors for $18 a piece or $20 a piece in the U.S. To make a similar motor, singular motor in the United States with all the raw materials, you're looking at $100 per motor just to make it. And if you double it, triple it, quadruple the tariffs on a motor, it is still less expensive to purchase from overseas. So we're going to see motors increase radios. I know of a few people that are pushing towards that direction. You may be able, in your mind, if listeners, you might be able to say, oh, this, this company says that they have a American-made radio or whatnot, whatnot. What we're finding is that the internal circuitry is still made and manufactured overseas or in China in some cases. So you're not getting around it. And as the crackdown continues, they're going to become unavailable or you're going to see costs increase to the consumer. We have the focus. We have a plan to do it and we're working towards that. But all of that will take time. And then batteries, to answer your question, that is not done in the United States, not for the hobbyist level. So raw LiPo batteries that the hobbyists use, the FPV flyers, the drone soccer flyers, those are all made overseas. It's a very dirty business to be in. There, there's harvesting the raw materials. There can be a lot of pollution associated with it. And as well as the experience and the quality that you're coming out with, right? So you could have a comparable battery made in the U.S., but it might not live as long, might not last as long. Your flight time will get reduced. All of that is going to be a sacrifice and the price will be higher. So right now, batteries have not been affected in the United States at least for drone sports side. We have plenty of batteries in the United States in a warehouse. Everything will be good to go for quite some time, which is great. But if nothing changes, I would say in the next few months, then we will see increases associated with batteries. Yeah. If someone is an FPV flyer, builds their own hobby drones, whatever, which components would you say all of them, but like, th which should people focus on? Like, Hey, like I really enjoy my hobby. Maybe I even do some of this more than a hobby. I need to go maybe stockpile a few. Would it be batteries? What, what other components do you think folks should try to get while they can before they become scarce? If you're focused on the hobbyist side, or maybe you're doing real estate fly-throughs, or you're making a business out of you know, pre-style drones or cameras, I recommend getting motors. Flight controllers will continue to improve in the United States as they come online, more features, more options. But if you're demanding a lot from your flight controller, I recommend getting the one you want, maybe getting a couple spares. The motors especially, I would pick up extra motors, and then the batteries to get ahead of it. Cameras are an interesting topic. All cameras in the FPV world, short of like DJI or, or other high-end, uh, high-def cameras, I, I don't know about those, but especially the analog side, those boards are all made overseas. So security cameras are going to go away for the FPV flight until we can bring that to the United States. And then radios would be another good option to to make sure that you have at least one maybe two to weather the storm until the american manufacturing gets up and running but there's nothing on the horizon in the u.s anytime soon i mean we're talking at least a year out from something coming online wow what about props like stuff that's not even you know electronic are props even available made in the u.s or not china or is that not really a, a thing either at the hobbyist level I am not aware of any. Those are all made overseas. A lot of that comes to manufacturing skill level experience, the molds, balance, precision. Those are still relatively inexpensive, a couple dollars for a set of props. So you don't have to worry about that too much. You'll still be able to afford that even in the long term. That would be a massive, massive investment in the United States to make sure to make that worth it. And investing in the molds, having the experience to do that. Yeah. In mm -hmm. general, for the drone community, we're again talking about the hobbyist users for the most part. Maybe some of that bubbles up into more enterprise stuff. Is there any ray of hope? We got to ride the wave and 
just wait? Like, what, what do you think? Where, where's our hope? In yes. Yes. Okay. So here's the hope, everybody out there. The truth is, is that this whole process, everything we're seeing right now is a long time coming. What happened is, is that due to the current political climate, we have fallen off of a cliff and everything has been moved up by one to two decades. So me as a company, we're like, okay, cool. Yesterday we could source the equipment. Today we can't. There is now a market for that equipment in the United States. Who do we purchase from? Well, the answer was it was never profitable. So there's so much business opportunity and entrepreneurs to start up. And we've always had the capability to bring this in-house, most things in-house. We have the resources, all that is, the outlook is amazing for us. And as we close up our borders and become self-contained, we'll continue to be prosperous. I still expect a, an economy decline in that process, but we will still do well. The catch is those factories and those businesses take upwards of a decade to start up, build those factories and get everything going. And you also got to look at the labor force. Do we want to go back to assembly lines and steel works and, you know, working next to a smelter all day? Maybe, maybe not. We're trying to do our best. The opportunity is massive, but all of that will take time. So that's the good news. We'll be okay. It's hmm. going to be painful for a while and it's going to yeah. be a lot faster than anyone ever thought we would have to move. Yeah. So that's the ray of hope for folks who are like, hey, this is me. Like I am a big FPV pilot. I'm going to need some of these components as shortages start occurring, whatever. How are they going to be able to track or access or order or get information about when these products do become available? I think you said late summer into fall. We'll have the first flight controller up and running in the next week or two. We have a follow on flight controller that's an all in one. That'll be coming out in the following weeks, uh, currently anticipating June. Beyond that, is uh, we'll just continue to develop and build based on what the market needs. So if you're interested in reaching out to us, we'd love to talk with you. You can email me at eric, E-R-I-C, at dronesports.us. And I also recommend reach out and just get on our newsletter list. That's where we'll announce the new flight controllers will be available, the new receivers, everything else that we're working on, and just stay in touch. And we'll do our best to just supply everything as quickly as possible. Awesome. So email you or even just, I guess, visit dronesports.us. Get a lot yes. more information there. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So for the bonus ray of sunshine and just things that are fun and, and cool, tell us a little bit about the, I guess it's the, is it the collegiate, U.S. collegiate drone soccer nationals, whatever the proper name is. That just happened in the, what, the last week or two, early May, correct? Yes. Uh, May 2nd and 3rd, the World Air Sports Federation, FAI, the F9A Drone Soccer National Tournament happened for the United States, and it was a fantastic battle of 21 teams that were able to attend. And it was over the course of a Friday, Saturday. All the teams did a phenomenal job practicing, getting ready, planning out their tactics, getting the drones set, ready to go, and just came out. And it was, it was so much fun. It was truly, in the words of one of the coaches, a celebration of everything that they've achieved throughout the year. And in that, we, we got to talk with a lot of students, a lot of coaches, just finding out what drone soccer has done for them. And we're seeing a lot of our seniors have plans, have scholarships to colleges, pursuing aerospace a, as a career field, whether that's engineering, piloting, part 107 certification. There's just been so many opportunities and it's just invigorating for us. So it was a, a really, really fun time. If you're able to make it next year, or if you're able to participate in drone soccer, I highly recommend it for any of your schools out there. It provides the foundation for so many bigger and better things as they go into high school and beyond. So yes, it was a great time at the Sky Dome in, in Rome, New York, which is a New York UAS test site. Gotcha. So just to be clear, so it was not collegiate national. This was like secondary, like middle high school students competing in these nationals. Is that correct? It was middle school, high school. However, it's an all-encompassing league. We could have had a group of dads that showed up to come and compete. But in this case, we only had middle school, high school be there. College is more than welcome. Outside of that, organizations are more than welcome. The league will continue to evolve as we grow. Awesome. Was there a single national champion declared, one of the schools, or can you shout them out? Yes. I'd like to do a shout out to Sato Academy, the 2025 national champions. Mushu out of Long Beach. Uh, Mushu is the team name. They were the 2023 national champions. So to see them come back after one year and continue to rise to the top is just a testament to the skill of those players. Our last year's champions, the 2024, shout out to Cabrillo. They ended up taking second place this year as many of those students go into college and pursue careers. 
it's going to be anyone's game next year. So it's going to be a full mix up for next season. No, that's awesome. Well, Eric, thanks again for tackling the kind of tricky topic, tricky times. So thank you for coming on to do that. And again, for folks who are still like, well, what is drone soccer? This is all fascinating, but what is that? It's episode 95 on YDQA.io. Find it there, find it on YouTube. So with all that said, Eric, thanks again. Until next time to our listeners, got a question you want to tackle on this show, please send me an email at chris at dronelaunchacademy.com. Visit ydqa.io or drop it in the Drone Launch Connect community if you're a member. Until next time, have a great week.